My name is Mark Lepettis, and I'm the senior editor of Semiconductor Manufacturing and Design. And I'm here at the Computer History Museum in Mountain View. And I'm, today I'm talking to Steve Longoria, senior vice president of Soyatech, uh, SOI wafer maker. And uh, Steve, uh, we're seeing a lot of interesting things going on in the market, especially the uh, an inflection point where we're seeing all kinds of ships from planar to perhaps FinFET to FDSOI to perhaps other architectures. Where are we at right now, if you could help us out a little bit? Oh, thanks, Mark. It's a pleasure to talk to you today and uh, discuss uh, what's happening in the future of technology. So right now, the market is seeing really the end of bulk CMOS with uh, 28 nanometer and looking at a variety of options on how to go forward. Not one size fits all, but what is undeniable is the industry must go to a fully depleted structure. Two options out there today. One is the FinFET, um, which is really ideal for very high performance, high end computing. And the other is the planar FDSOI technology that uh, Soytech and our partners are bringing to market. Uh, that technology is ideal for low leakage, high performance, low power applications, uh, which is really the mainstream of mobile computing today and will be the mainstream of the infrastructure requirements going forward. So we see uh, that transition happening. We see it's coming way down the path on, on going there. And uh, an FDSOI in a planar offers clients a much more cost-effective solution to uh, the next uh, technology beyond bulk CMOS. Steve, uh, in the past, there's always been a concern about the infrastructure issues with SOI in terms of getting an ample wafer supply, in terms of finding maybe a second source of manufacturing, etc. It seems like the infrastructure ecosystem has evolved. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, great. Thanks, Mark. That's a very timely question. We're in the process of our partnership with Global Foundries in uh, enabling uh, FDSOI at 28 nanometers to be available through Global Foundries in a standard fabulous foundry ecosystem. And that is going to spur and grow an IP ecosystem around that offering. In addition to that, we're working very closely with the other wafer manufacturers um, that produce SOI wafers, being uh, Shinitsu in Japan, <coughs> excuse me, who has a long-term partnership with Soytech and we're enabling them to have uh, as an independent supplier matching our process and our specifications and we're doing the same uh, extending the same partnership with uh, with MEMC and working with them to make sure that there are three independent suppliers able to meet the market's needs and high growth for uh, FDSOI as it becomes a mainstream technology. We feel very well positioned to meet the needs of, uh, of the mobile market going forward. You also have an offering in the uh, SOI in a, in a FinFET-based offering. And, of course, the foundries are uh, talking about bulk CMOS. They're also looking at uh, the bulk or the FinFET in an SOI offering. It, it still seems wide open. And I think, it, what are the advantages, shall we say, of going to a an SOI based in uh, uh, for FinFET. So Mark, I'm glad you asked that. What, where we are going with a, a FinFET is we see the need for, as a FinFET needs to scale in manufacturing in terms of cost and power consumption and reduce leakage, there is a requirement to have an isolation layer under the fin. Um, SOI is uniquely positioned to pre-integrate that isolation layer under a top silicon that we're now able to control with uh, angstrom level thicknesses. So we are providing a offering to the marketplace that simplifies the manufacturing of a FinFET, significantly reducing the cost in the front end of line, but also then embedding um, the isolation layer, both of which these two play into making a FinFET, a, uh, or I should say making SOI, a ideal starting place for high, per, high volume uh, low leakage FinFET applications going forward. And regarding, uh, shall we say, the CMOS or 
bulk CMOS versus SOI. Of course, uh, people have talked in the past about the cost of SOI, perhaps even the process steps of uh, bringing that into fruition. It seems like SOI is kind of caught up in that particular uh, area. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, I think what you're seeing is an integration that's happening between the front end of line of the foundries and what an engineered wafer can bring to market. And what's happening is we are pre-embedding many of the process steps at a wafer level, at wafer level economics, that don't have to be then implemented at the foundry. A lot of the implant steps with FDSOI are removed out of the ST microelectronics process flow and multiple mass layers are removed. So there is a, uh, the SOI wafer does have more cost going in to the foundry versus a standard bulk wafer, but the resultant die cost and wafer cost is lower because of this simplification. So we're seeing some move in the integration between what used to be where a wafer ended and where the foundry picked up, but the net is to the fabless and to the consumer is a lower cost solution by using a SOI wafer. Okay, Steve, I'd like to switch gears for a second and talk about perhaps really one of the more emerging and maybe the most exciting stories in the market, of course, and that's LTE. And within LTE, we're seeing some dramatic changes in the RF front end, per se, with, uh, uh, of course, the power amp is still kind of dominated by gallium arsenide, but we're seeing a switch uh, to, shall we say, F SOI among the, all of the major players in the, in the RF antenna switch to SOI and perhaps even in the power amp. Could you uh, give us some, a handle on some of the trends in that area? Yeah, Mark, the, uh, it, it is a very exciting part of our business and it's largely in the 200 millimeter space um, using legacy fabs, using technologies around 130, 180 that are ideally suited for uh, RF CMOS type applications. Um, power amps are moving to SOI. Um, it's really, it's, it's a slightly different wafer than we're using in the high-end digital spaces and advanced digital, but it is high resistivity uh, uh, SOI that is perfectly suited for high quality signals um, and is becoming really the standard technology for development of RF and power amps and the integration um, of those together into a single SOCs. This to me is a precursor to what is going to enable further integration with, uh, with digital as we look even several years down the road. Regarding the uh, uh, debate on uh, FinFET's bulk CMOS that is and the SOI version is there a one-size-fits-all? And perhaps you could give us a handle on, say, the benefits of one over the other in terms of power or uh, cost, process steps, etc. So, Mark, it goes back kind of to the, the central point of bulk CMOS is, in the planer that we've all used for years, is into lifing. We have to go to fully depleted. There are two choices to go to a fully depleted device. The FDSOI planer solution, which is available today at 28 nanometer at a cost structure that hits the mainstream requirements for high volume consumer applications. Um, there is the FinFET is coming. There is huge investment in our industry from all the major foundries to go implement that design. That is also a fully depleted structure. A lot of unknowns there still in terms of the cost when it can address the mainstream application space in terms of power performance leakage. FinFETs are going to be great for the high end where uh, CPUs and largely why Intel went there. Um, but we see a coexistence between the two of depending on the different application space, um, you will go to a fully depleted device. We see a tremendous business opportunity and, uh, and ability for the industry to stay in a planar structure for at least three generations of technology and uh, take advantage of FDSOI. At uh, Steve at IEDM, IBM made some very interesting uh, comments about what they're doing, say, how to scale FinFETs beyond, shall we say, the 10 nanometer node. One of that was something called FOX, and that was uh, 
uh, something quite interesting. Can you elaborate what that's all about? Yeah, Mark, uh, we're working very closely with our partners at IBM to optimize a FinFET offering using an SOI wafer. So FOX really stands for FinFET on Oxide. So we are doing, uh, and, and what we're doing with IBM is we're providing them an optimized wafer. Because we're able to control our thicknesses now in the, both the Oxide and the top silicon within an angstrom levels across the wafers, we are pre, I guess I would say pre-finning the wafer for uh, companies like IBM that now can just etch down that top silicon, the channel between the fins, and, and it's already there. IBM sees tremendous value, both in terms of the transistor performance, the leakage reduction, but also the cost, because they see the ability to remove many steps of what the rest of the industry has to do in terms of manufacturing a fin fet and provide isolation between fins. It's inherent in the wafer that we provide to IBM and, and, are, and are working and providing to others to evaluate. Um, so it's, it's a really a, a significant simplification of how to develop and build a FinFET. Steve Longoria, thank you very much. Mark, as always, it's a pleasure. Thanks for the opportunity to talk to you and your viewers.